everyone, Mom Reviews here. So I am a very, very basic beginner sewer. I only started sewing a few things um, for Grayson's first birthday cake smash outfit. Um, and then I got into sewing Christmas stockings because I want everyone to have matching stockings in the family and to color coordinate with our theme, which is typically just um, blue, white, silver, kind of frosty looking. Um, anyways, like, like I said, I'm a beginner sewer, so I don't understand all the terminology, nor can I follow a pattern correctly. It's all just kind of winging it. So I bring this tutorial for you guys today because when I did a lot of Google searching and YouTube searching on how to do exactly what I'm going to do, there weren't a lot of videos and the ones weren't really clear. So this is kind of a dummy's guide on how to sew a stocking that has a cuff, a full over cuff, and it also doesn't have any of the raw edges or raw seams on the inside. Everything is completely finished. I'm also a very visual person, so I think if I was able to see somebody on YouTube actually do this, it would have helped out a lot more. Now I did end up making a test stocking with extra fabric that I had in the house before I made my actual stocking because I didn't want to mess up on all the fabric um, because it was expensive fabric, relatively expensive, and I just didn't want to eat through that in case I messed up. So if you're a beginner sewer and you want to tackle this, I highly recommend making a test stocking just to make sure you know what you're doing so you can figure out all the curves, all the linings, how everything fits together. To get started, you're going to want a pattern. Um, I tried to make my own, but I wasn't happy with it, so I ended up going with McCall's Crafts M2991 pattern and all these fun little stockings here. Um, as you can see, I ended up picking this cool, this cool little elf one. I just like the points of it, um, but you can pick any pattern that you want really, or you can make your own by tracing it out on a piece of paper. Um, it works the exact same as a pattern, it just, you have to figure out all the angles and curves yourself. So once you've got your pattern, figure out how much fabric you're going to need, take yourself over to your fabric land or a craft store, or a store that has fabric that you want. Um, and I picked out four different types of material. You only need three for this really. So you're going to need material for the outside of the stocking, uh, lining if you choose to do lining, if not that's totally optional. You're going to want a piece of fabric for the cuff and you can either use fabric or ribbon for this little hang tag. I just used ribbon from a leftover project that I have already, or that I had already, and it worked out perfect. So the reason why I said I'm using four is actually because this little snowflake pattern is an overlay. So the blue fabric underneath it is separate from the top little lacy snowflake. So I actually had to adhere the two pieces of fabric together to get the look that I wanted. Now the next part is to sew all the pieces together, which sounds really easy and it is kind of easy, but these are the steps that I used. Once your pieces are all cut out, you're going to want to start sewing them together. So this is the lining and I face the right sides together and what that means is this is satin, the blue satin, this is the side you want showing out. So that's the right side, the wrong side is on the inside of the material, if that makes any sense. Uh, so you want to face right sides together and sew all the way around your fabric. Um, and the seam allowance is going to be according to your pattern. If you make your own pattern, you can choose whatever seam allowance you want. I usually end up sticking with a quarter of an inch. So you don't want to sew up the top of the stocking, so leave that open. Now you've got right sides facing together, and again, this is the lining. You want to do the exact same thing with the outside of your stocking, and I've done that here. I've already turned it around, so I had right sides together, stitched it all up, turned it inside out, and now you've got your right side of fabric for the outside, facing the outside. What you should have now is the outside of the fabric, right sides out, and the lining of the fabric, wrong sides out. Next, um, in the pattern you'll also want to measure your cuff. I'm not going to give you measurements because it's going to vary depending on how wide and how tall you want your cuff, um, but this is what it looks like. So this is a circle piece of fabric, it was just a long piece of fabric. So at right sides together, I stitched up all along here and then I pressed the seams open. Now what you're going to have is a tube and you want to basically fold it in half so then the right sides are facing out now. I want to line up the insides of the seams here so they're right on top of each other. And then fold it down as evenly as possible. Um, and then I pressed it with an iron just to make things a little bit easier when I'm stitching things together. Now you'll want to take the outside of your stocking, take your folded cuff, and since I want my stockings hanging this way, um, the seam on this cuff, I'm going to line it up with the back seam of this stocking. So what you basically want to do is open up your cuff and stick it over your stocking. So now it's lined all the way around. If you open it up, 
it looks like that. So I just want to show you that I'm lining up the back seams together so they're straight over top of each other. And at this point you're going to want to take your little loop of fabric or your ribbon, fold it in half, So this is the bottom of the stocking, this is the top, and I've got the seams lined up. You want to take your loop, line it up halfway in the center, and then let the loop hang down. So now I'm going to pin that. So when all of your pieces of fabric are together, and I'm just going to pin the other side as well to secure it. You're also going to want to make sure that everything fits snug and tight here, that there's not any extra bunching of material. Now once that is all pinned together, you want to take your lining, the wrong side's facing out, and you're going to stuff everything inside. I'm literally just taking this, and shoving it inside. Line up all of the seams and the pin that we had before, we're going to take that out, but keep your hand pressed to, to keep all the layers together and we're going to re-pin that. So all the layers including the lining are pinned together. Now do the same on the other side and you're ready to go to the sewing machine. So all you want to do is sew all the way around it. Make sure you don't sew through it you want to put this on the arm of your sewing machine and sew all the way around it with uh, whatever seam allowance your pattern says. So this is what it looks like now after taking it all the way around with the sewing machine. And the one thing that I forgot to mention, um, depending on how tight your, your stitches are, when you're sewing your line, you want to leave about this much room, and take uh, everything out, and turn everything inside out. Um, in my case, I just leave it as is and then I unstitch the opening at the end because it's easier to sew everything in one fluid line instead of stopping and starting. Again, that's me being a beginner sewer and that's how I like to do it right now. So I'm just going to take my seam ripper and somewhere near the bottom of the lining, um, I'm just going to unstitch this much. So now I've taken out the seams. You just want to pull and very gently pull in this case. So you want to take the inside of your stocking and just pull everything and kind of flip it inside out. So this is what one of the steps that would have been helpful for me to see um, in the tutorials rather than just seeing it on paper. But that's what it looks like. And you want to flip this part all the way out. Um, if you're sewing the round stockings that don't have these toes on them, they're a lot easier and you don't have to try to pry that little pointy toe out. So now once you're happy with everything, there's a little issue of sewing that back up. Um, you can do an invisible blind stitch, I think it's called, but I'm literally just going to do a top stitch. I'm just going to fold that part in and literally just do a top stitch right uh, over And it. as you can see, it's a very ugly top stitch. You can see the seam, but this is going to be tucked inside the stocking, so I don't really care. Now this is what it's all going to look like once you've taken it, um, kind of folded it inside out. So now what you want to do take this lining and shove it back inside the stocking. And there you have it. Your stocking has no raw seams on the inside, everything's finished, it's got a nice lining, and it's got your fold over cuff. So if you want to, if you've got things, if you're stuffing it full of things and you need a little bit extra room, you, actually you can pull that cuff out and make it even longer. And this is what the hanging loop looks like the inside. Now all you want to do from here is kind of press all the seams together and press everything out. It looks nice and flat. So there you have it. Uh, this is my second, third, technically my third sewing project, but my second one since I started last week, and I'm super happy with them. So I pushed out five of these for the family. In case you're actually counting, the fifth one is a TBD. Um, we plan on having a second baby, not anytime soon, but uh, since I want matching stockings for everyone, I don't want to have to go out and find the same fabric uh, a couple years from now when we do have baby number two. So I'm just doing all five now. My husband, myself, two babies, and a dog. So everyone's going to have the exact same stocking. Um, the one thing I want to mention, when you actually have your stocking and you have all these curves in it, 
at around each point of the curve, you want to cut out a little notch. Uh, this is a horrible example because these are horrible uh, notches. But you just want to snip a little triangle notch in all the corners so when you turn it inside out, um, there's a little bit less ball. Your lines will look a lot cleaner. So I hope you guys found that a little bit helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave in the down bar below. Uh, as always, I'll post a corresponding blog post on www.thediaperchronicles.com. Hope you guys are having a fabulous day and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye. You can shake that as much as you want and it's completely 100% spill proof and I absolutely love that. So it's great for on the go. It's great to throw in your diaper bag without having to worry about.